Hi there and welcome. My name is Juliana Hawk and I help people who may or may not be diagnosed with ADHD and I help you go from uncertainty to feeling in control and productive. Welcome to Easy ADHD Coaching. As always, I'm so happy to be here. And as always, your brain is perfect just the way you are. And, you know, don't compare yourself to other people because, you know, it's not worth comparing apples to oranges like my seventh grade algebra teacher used to say. But you're perfect just the way you are. And of course, whatever um, I can do to support you as your ADHD coach, please let me know. Um, you can always schedule a complimentary discovery call on my website to see if we are a good fit working together. And yeah, let's jump on into things. So today I wanted to keep today's video a little shorter because I would like to dive deeper into this topic another time and also show you tangibly my personal operating manual. Um, but for today, I just wanted to start with, you know, what are the instructions of getting your personal operating manual together? And, you know, what does this look like and how could it help you? So um, without further ado, I think it's also important to express, you know, where I learned about a personal operating manual and really what it has done for me. So um, I originally learned about my personal operating manual from Tracy Aotsuka, the fairy godmother of ADHD, and um, she uh, created a five-day course to help females learn more about their personalized ADHD. And um, through the process of um, completing her course, I ended up writing um, an 80-page book of my personal operating manual. So that was in July 2021. And yes, all 81 pages were my own words. So it was a lot of, you know, in-depth information, but also that wasn't included in the 81 pages was the hard research and, you know, the proven data and things that really helped me from scholarly articles um, that I kept in my manual. That Those items and, you know, having that research and evidence really, really helped me because I'm not going based off of, you know, what someone said. I'm going off of, you know, what someone studied and then their research on it. So I really appreciate um, lived, learn, um, you know, reading and learning about other people's lived experiences who especially have gone through a similar challenge and, you know, you know, how to learn, you know, how to work with their brain, because something that a lot of people don't say and tell you, you know, as you're maturing and that your brain is cognitively developing and that the neurons of your brain is that, you know, we have to understand how our brain works in order to receive and process information. And by doing that, we can then communicate our needs and have better understanding of our values and then really live a more fulfilling and quality life that is worth living for. So um, these again are just things that happen for me. And, you know, ADHD coaching and your ADHD journey is so different for everybody. You know, everyone has their own type of AD, own kind of ADHD. So my journey is going to look a lot different than yours. And another thing is some people get diagnosed late in life. Some people had accommodations and support and, you know, early on in her interventions at a childhood age. So, you know, their type of ADHD day-to-day -day challenges could look completely different than ours or mine. And another thing to keep in touch and just to know is, you know, ADHD is going to show up differently in different stages of our lives because, you know, if when I'm, you know, 18 years old, my brain is still, you know, the prefrontal cortex is still like developing as I, I develop into a 30 year old, your brain is developed at that point. So at that point, you're learning workaround strategies and coping mechanisms and just learning how you process information. And then, you know, as we get older in life and, you know, we receive, we hit 35, 40, we might see premenopausal or hormones imbalance. So just understanding that um, and just being aware that your brain is completely fine the way it is. But like, if you are super set and you feel like you're functioning really well, and then you're just confused what happened one day. Another thing that can happen, uh, like with your day-to-day -day functionality of being able to complete things. Another thing to be really aware of that is not discussed is that, you know, trauma, some, um, and some other disorders or co can conditions also can show up as ADHD. And I want you to know that 
like when I said interventions and disorders, I'm not saying it from a place of judgment or a place of, you know, you're not enough. It's just, I don't know what other words to say for them. So I just want you to know, this is not a place of judgment. I'm just trying to tell a tight story with what I'm saying. Um, okay. Cause only because sometimes I brought the, that up with other people and they just didn't like the way it was said, but sometimes hard words that we don't like is just the easiest way to describe things. So without further ado, I really put a lot of thought into, um, you know, how to start creating your personal operating manual. And I would really appreciate it if this is just kept to my page because it's not trademarked just yet. Um, <clears throat> but so without further ado, let's jump on into things. So as I kind of already started saying is, you know, we're all in different phases of our personal transformation of our self-discovery. We all are in different places of our ADHD. And a lot of times um, learning, like we could be diagnosed ADHD, but there are other things going on in our lives that we can't really explain. So this is also a really great way to start documenting, keeping data, having records of other you know, things that are showing up, other actions, behaviors, thoughts, whatever that emotions that are showing up for you on your day-to-day -day life. It's really important to start keeping track of those. And it's only because when you go to see your psychiatrist and they misdiagnose you, you have the evidence to state, you know, this happened at this day and you can show the inflexibility or you can show a graph of like, look, I'm telling you, like, this is not normal and this is how I'm feeling and I need your help. Um, my best advice is when you're going to a psychiatrist is to have evidence of, you know, bat, like proven evidence of yourself of these are stats of my ADHD. Um, when I, cause when I saw my psychiatrist, there wasn't even a point in like a question doubt about it. I had examples of how my ADHD shows up and for, cause Right now in the DSM-5, ADHD is broken into three subtypes, um, inattentive ADHD, hyperactive ADHD, and um, uh, combined type. You know, as the DSM-5 in 2024, I really, um, I really do believe that the DSM-5 is working towards one ADHD because so many of the conditions of inattentiveness and hyperactivity do co coexist and like uh, overlap. So um, I think it's important to even make ADHD one type. Um, okay, but without for, um, and that why I feel that way is also because so many times females, like science and research shows that females are not getting diagnosed as often as boys and also men. So whether they're a child or later in adult life or, you know, in adult life. And it's just important to recognize that ADHD is real and it's not just existing in, in a um, hyperactive voice. It's also in a female and it's important to acknowledge that and also maybe even to accept that. Um, so without further ado, this operating manual is for the person who is a working professional, high functioning adult looking to start, you know, keeping stock or, you know, having stock in their behaviors and actions. So let's jump on into things. So I, I actually am pretty open with telling, you know, people about my focus and my attention deficit. So I, um, what I'm trying to say is, by being able to acknowledge how my brain works, which environments I work well in, um, what interests me, I am much equipped to be attentive in a conversation. I'm much more equipped to remember what was said, be much more able to follow through. So um, I just wanted to share some of these, you know, tips with you guys. Um, and I actually forgot I had uh, to include one of these. Oh, I know. Um, okay, so let's jump on it. So, um, I let's start with the you know day to day functions. So for this, I keep record of um like what are my natural interests? What am I naturally interested in? What get, um motivates me? What keeps me interested? I can this can be anything from where you are at home to work to outside of just day-to-day -day life, keeping your life balance. So whatever interests you, whether it is gaming, um, you know, going for a bike ride, being in nature, you know, 
um, interacting, connecting with people, whatever interests you keep, um, you know, start key, uh, keeping data of what interests you, because we'll be able to tie this into other areas of our lives. So keeping, um, um, I have a column for my natural interest, my natural strength. So what am I naturally able to do without much mind muscle connection? Like, what am I able to do that I'm just naturally good at? Um, um, I'm, I'm trying to keep this in like a chronological order. So that's, I would say interest and strengths moving. The next thing is, uh, personal reflection. So just, um, uh, just starting to take notes of, you know, things that happened that either worked in your favor or didn't work in your favor. So for me, when I, when I, with personal reflections, if I write down something that didn't happen in my favor, let's say I left a voicemail and I might've left it too long or it didn't say the right thing. I'll then take a little note for myself. Hey, um, I would like to say this next time. So it's like, almost like I can start remembering that in my head. I might not look at it, this reflection another time, but at least I can take stock in my behavior. So I can, I'm just bringing the self-awareness that I want to do better next time. And this is how I can do it. And this is again, whatever you want to take from this, this is just things that help me. Um, I also have a column for uh, sources of inspiration. Um, so this could be anything from motivational quotations, um, uh, events that inspire you, um, workshops that inspire you, um, a picture, um, any type of art or creativity. So you can have as many pages or columns for sources of inspiration that, you know, could really help with your focus. Um, so the next part about the day-to-day -day of your personal operating manual is a toolkit of resources. So what I mean by that is professional support. Um, so for me, it's really important to know, like, who can I go to for support? And I also have call, um, in my professional support column, I have something for like couples therapy, therapy, psychiatrists you know, if I, um, eating disorder, like I just having the references of someone I can call or email if I need help is, uh, is kind of really important to me because it's, I've already done the hard work of finding a provider. So this is all something that I do. I can't help but say it again. So, um, and if you would like help with, um, understanding how to navigate, how to find providers, I can also do another video on that. Um, so without further ado, let's segue into the personal operating manual for your attention and focus for organization and productivity. So for me, understanding how I process information not only allowed me to, you know, retain information, follow through on things, but it also allowed me to be able to communicate my needs and values to others, to be able to set boundaries whether I'm at home or work. So for this co um, column, it is how do I best communicate and receive information? Um, this being said, um, this could be, you know, is it verbal? Do I need instructions? Do I need it through an email or text? Do I need a phone call? You know, keeping mind of how you process information. Um, and the next thing is like how you process information like during a meeting. And so are you better with handheld notes? Are you better with typing your notes, voicing your notes? Um, just so being aware of how you best remember important information so that you can follow through. Um, so next thing we're going to work into is um, so igniting your brain. What interests your brain to get you started at work? So this is task activation. So um, here are just a quick, here's a quick glance that of ways that help you get started, whether it's a timer, backwards planning. Again, these are things that are customizable and personalized to you. So even though I'm giving you examples, these are, you need to include things that work for you because what works for me may not work for you. And I cannot preach this enough. And this is why a life coach doesn't work for someone with ADHD and ADHD and someone with ADHD, we need to you know, have accountability measures that work for us, things that we value, things that, you know, are, you know, connected to 
why you want to do something. So um, these really have to be personalized to you of what works for you. So um, I want to know, you know, what gets you activated to get your work started? You know, is it having clear instructions, you know, having your favorite music on? I'm curious. Um, so the next thing is your environment for focus. So this is very important because some of us work at home, some of us work in a workplace environment, you know, next to our coworker. So what that means is I want to know exactly what is your workplace set up so that you can focus. So whatever that looks like for you, whether you want to draw it out or have bullet points, I'm here for it. Um, so the next uh, column is help me to take a pause. This is self-regulation and mindfulness. So in moments that you're having a hard time self-regulating, whether, you know, a coworker says something that you disagree with, or you are having a hard time regulating your emotions in the moment, these are just a few quick bullet points that you can refer to that will help you. Hey, this, I need to take a pause and I want to leave this out work. I don't want to take this frustration home with me. Or even if you're someone that's highly sensitive and you want to be able to recover from something that took your energy, this is a great way to start documenting things that can help you shift your perspective. Um, and that being said, my next um, of column is what are ways that you are able to shift your perspective, whether you are at home or work and you just are having a hard time with the impulsivity of, you know, feeling super focused on something. Um, yeah. So, you know, starting to have records of how you're able to cope with, you know, per, um, the perspective you are having. So you can reframe your perspective to, um, you know, be in a, be the person that you want to be so that you can, you know, live a life that's intentional to you, for you. Um, okay. Accommodations at work. So what this means is, are you somebody who needs instructions or you need some, are you someone that needs like a weekly team meeting? I'm not sure. Do you need calendar reminders on your tangible calendar and your computer calendar? I'm not sure, but like, I'm just curious, what do you need in order to be able to get your work done so you can like be satisfied at work. So whatever accommodations look like for you, I'm curious. Um, and, and also, you know, what we said was how to best communicate, you know, information to not only yourself, but your, your boss, your coworkers, you know, what are ways that you feel comfortable with doing that? So here are just a few, a few examples of how I, um, you know, you know, start acknowledging and build, building the self-awareness muscle of that mind muscle connection of, you know, being aware of what's happening in your life in the moment. So um, without further ado, if you are someone who is interested in learning more about how to recognize these, you know, um, what's happening in your life, like if you want help with, you know, uncovering and, you know, what direction to take with your daily ADHD challenges, that's a great topic to bring to an individual coaching session. So whether you're an adult, a working professional, a child, someone who is a young adult, you know, navigating high school to college, if you're a parent who has wants to just focus on your ADHD in addition to learning about your child's ADHD, like these are ways that you can apply this workaround manual to those type of who you are with your ADHD. And again, like your ADHD is perfect just the way it is. And don't let anyone ever tell you that you're not enough. You're not worthy because they're just not the person for you. Yeah. Contact me and I'll tell you any day that your brain is perfect. Um, so that being said, if you're interested in, you know, working with me, learning more about ADHD coaching, how I can help you, please you know, take the time to look at my website to see how I could help you. Some type of coaching topics are also listed on my uh, website, coaching conversations, things we can get curious on in a coaching conversation together. Um, you can go to my website, easyadhdcoaching.com, and you can book a complimentary discovery call there. And yeah, I can't wait to learn more about you and your ADHD and, you know, take care. If you guys do end up creating a personal operating manual and would like to learn more about 
how I organize this and would like to see my book and my actual tangible workaround manual, I'm happy to do that. I'll, I'll do another recording, but I wanted to at least get this to you guys, the general public, so you guys could start, you know, you know, keeping record of your ADHD. So you guys are doing great. Keep up the good work and I'll talk with you guys soon. Bye-bye.